Hello, everyone. Good evening to you. Uh, my name is Seg Rene, and I extend a warm, a warm welcome to you this evening. Um, just to remind everyone in the audience that it's about the DBA program that we offer at Mopar Business School. Um, so with that being said, um, welcome to the session. Uh, I'm the director of the business school um, at uh, Mopark. Uh, we've got a wonderful session planned for you this evening. Uh, joining me on stage, our virtual stage uh, this evening, is Dr. Khalida Akbar, who is the head of research. Um, Khalida comes with a number of years of experience in research and heading up DBA programs. She's an absolutely passionate individual when it comes to this particular area. Um, and and as part as the you know, bigger theme at Mopark Business School, she's one of the many uh, you know, passionate um, academics that you'll come across. And this is, again, a distinguishing kind of feature for us um, at Mopark Business School um, in comparison to others um, out in the marketplace. But without any further ado, and without me stealing uh, Kalida's thunder, let me ask Kalida um, to um, do a bit of an introduction to herself uh, before we get going. Lovely. Thank you for having me, Sagrin, and thank you for the very warm welcome and uh, introduction. Uh, really well appreciated. Um, I'm just going to say good evening, and I'm so happy to see so many of you here this evening for the session. Uh, as Sagrin has said, my name is Dr. Khalida Akbar. I very recently joined the Milk Park family and a DBA group. Uh, I obtained my uh, PhD in 2016. I got it at the age of 26 when I completed it. And I think uh, first and foremost, DBA is something that any, anybody can do at any age. Uh, my background is in human resource management. So um, most of my studies are in human resource, become uh, human resource management to be specific. And my doctoral study was ideally on disabilities and acquired brain injury, which then stem towards health sciences and as you see with my talk today as well that dba and business can be very multidisciplinary that my field is in both uh health sciences as well as um, sorry can you hear me clearly okay as well as uh in a lot of research in health sciences as well as business science uh business management sorry so with that uh, i come from um, 12 years of experience in public industries and uh, sorry public uh, universities two to five years in private uh, higher education institutions i've also uh, published quite uh, versatilely as well and just really enjoy research i love uh, the journey of research facilitation uh, supervision engaging in different studies and helping students along the line. And this is why I really love the DBA program so much and would love uh, to give as much information today to our potential candidates and also, um, you know, help them along this journey that is a really beautiful one when it comes to research, Sagrin. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kalida. Um, yeah, I, I can't underscore, um, you know, uh, this enough in terms of, um, um, you know, what Kalida is all about in terms of an academic, um, the areas that she researches in, uh, the areas that she publishes in, um, and how she, as the head of research, the, you know, as well as the DBA program, uh, would support your learning journey on uh, a DBA program. I'm going to get into some of the, um, um, you know, the bigger issues and paint a far, you know, bigger picture with respect to the DBA program in a little while. But uh, Kalida, can you just in terms of um, again uh, the um, yeah just the program itself, um, with respect to this particular slide, um, have you covered all of the issues over here in terms of what you basically plan on talking to uh, this evening with respect to the DPA program? Just a bit of it, ideally to give you a bit of a synopsis of what we're going to cover today. I will touch on why we have the DBA at Mill Park. What are the expectations? We'll have a bit of a discussion on what uh, differentiates a PhD from a DBA. Uh, I know that the burning question from many students are what are the fee structures like? How much does it cost? Uh, the entry requirements, the phases and processes. So just to give as much information as we can. And from this perspective, understanding that the D DBA is necessarily a transformative journey. It's a journey that takes uh, from two to five years or two to four years where it actually transforms the way you think, the way you, way you strategize, and the kind of leadership you would necessarily have, yes, Sagan. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much, um, Kalida. 
Um, folks, um, I ask for your indulgence at this particular point in time. Earlier on, we had some technical issues uh, with our colleague Zelna. So I am going to bring her onto the stage. Um, I think she can hear me quite clearly right now. Yes, so there, are, there is a team of individuals um, within the DBA program, as you can imagine. And Zelna is one of those individuals. Lots of experience um, in this particular area. When, you know, uh, Kalida speaks about a tra transformative experience, it's also for us um, incredibly important to show our human-centered uh, approach to what we do um, and how we integrate um, our, you know, the human connections in, 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 in uh, basically enabling you uh, when you get onto this particular journey. So Zalna, without any further, uh, further ado, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and to introduce yourself to everyone this evening. Thank you, Sigrun. So, hi, hi everyone. I'm a little bit nervous now, battling trying to get into the webinar. But anyways, uh, my name is Zalna Hart. Uh, I am an academic administrator for the DBA and MBA research modules at Millpock Education. Um, so here's a little bit about me. I'm passionate about my work, about the students and their success and their journey along the way. Um, I'm always willing to lend a hand to help the students thrive. I believe that the future success of Millpock Education is having an on-hands approach and uh, I remain committed to the students and the values of Millpock Business School. Now, outside of the office, I'm an artist, a little bit of a DIY enthusiast and uh, an adventurous cook. I'm happily married with two beautiful children and um, I just want to tell you that if you decide to go on this journey with us uh, with Millpark uh, we'll look forward to working with you and getting to know you better um, and thank you thank you for uh, being here that's all thank you very much lovely thank you so much uh, Zelna um, so you've heard thus far in terms of just the brief introduction uh, a brief welcome and I want to just basically expand that. Um, so this evening, just a, a couple of things also to bear in mind as part of uh, the welcome. Um, yep, this is uh, Millpark Business School. We are talking about uh, the DBA program. Um, it's a distance learning online program. Um, it does require you to uh, participate in very specific ways. Um, Kalida will explain a bit more um, as she presents this evening. Um, we spoke a bit about who we are as Millpark Business School, when we talk about, you know, human-centric and human-centered with a lot of engagement, um, you know, between us and you, um, this is just part of the team that exists at uh, Millpark. There are more individuals as well. So for us, it's about absolutely supporting, you know, your success on the program. This word around transformative, um, it is, um, I mean, when individuals consider the DBA, it is the pinnacle of programs, so individuals do need to show up rather differently when it comes to this particular uh, program. There are certain expectations of you when it comes to the outputs as well, and that will be clarified for you a little later on um, as, we, um, as we also speak about it. Now, we have um, crafted this particular presentation or conversation with you based on, um, again, just I guess, demystifying what the DBA program is about, and that's what uh, Kalida is going to do. Um, additionally, you know, over the years, we get FAQs, frequently asked questions from individuals, and we've incorporated that in terms of the presentation. I'm going to be, um, after Kalida does her, her presentation about the program, then the next part of this evening's session will be around a Q&A. I'm going to ask uh, Kalida some very specific questions in terms of just guiding your thinking, guiding your approach, and taking this next big step uh, in terms of the DBA program. Then I'm going to uh, you know, um, uh, touch on Zalna with um, some of the, um, again, deep experiences that she's had in uh, walking this journey with students and some of the advice that she can uh, provide to you. We also have a chat, um, so I encourage you, if you uh, encourage you to ask questions as and when the presentation is happening, um, and I will be prompted and I will look 
at the questions in the chat and I will you know, bring them in as well. Uh, we will certainly put in our email addresses um, below um, the, well, the slide that you can see right now on the screen. There's a little green button with white um, fonts that says new MBA. We had a bit of a tussle because this is a Kremlin that has basically kind of crept into this evening's presentation. It's supposed to be information about the DBA. So everything, the coding, et cetera, of this particular tile says information about the DBA, but it has just been rather stubborn this evening and it hasn't cooperated with us. So you're in the right session. If you click on the button, it will give you information about the DBA program. So we encourage you, you know, to do that so that you can also be apprised of uh, what's there. Without any further ado, so, oh, let me also just say, um, this session is meant to go up until six o'clock. Um, so the first um, 30 or 40 minutes will be around the presentation question and answers. I will, um, you know, thread in your questions as well. And then um, if there are more questions from you, I will certainly, you know, pose it to um, uh, Kalida and Zalna, and then we'll bring the session to an end. So with that being said, Kalida, I'm going to turn it over to you um, and for your presentation. So thank you so much, Segrin. Uh, you know, just to pick up from where Segrin touched on this transformative journey and talking about being human-centered, I think it's such an important question to start off with because, uh, you know, as human beings, we look at this DBA and we say, wow, this is a red gown moment. This is the moment where you get that uh, amazing doctor title. But when you're starting your journey, it makes it a bit confusing. It may seem a bit daunting to understand why should I do this? Am I necessarily going to become overqualified? Am I going to be underexperienced? Um, depending on my age and position, is it worthwhile? Uh, will I actually even manage to complete this? Um, is it something that's attainable? And these are the kind of natural questions we ask ourselves. And for that reason, I wanted to chat a bit about what sets this DBA apart. What makes it so different and uh, what, does, what really makes it so attainable that will help you in your career path is that it focuses on business-driven ideas and problem-solving techniques. So what, what we're really trying to say in a nutshell is that when you do a DBA, it's a strategy-driven technique, a skill set that you are developing to enhance your career and your drive. So with that, uh, ideally, I'm saying a DBA sets you apart because you would then be enhancing your strategic thinking. It helps you in terms of industry influence as well as a professional. Remember, when you do qualify and you get that qualification, you are known as a specialist in that field. Okay, so you specialize in a specific topic, a specific area, and you are the best to uh, advise in that department specifically. It helps a lot as well in terms of professional development, in terms of which stage of the career growth uh, you are looking at yourself in, whether you are looking towards attaining continuous learning. Um, it helps you gain new perspectives in terms of leadership skills. Uh, it also really helps you in terms of uh, remaining competitive in this changing business landscape that we faced with. Um, just to add a few more, maybe uh, networking and collaboration, because our program is so vast that you actually engage with so many professionals in the field, academics in the field, uh, you know, uh, classmates as well that you study with and conferences made that you most likely would attend. And this would really help you in terms of networking. Ideally, you want to be an individual that's known for career longevity and transition. And you also want to have personal growth. And by completing this DBA, this, what, this is what allows you to then stand out. It makes you different and stand apart from the rest of the world. And from there, I wanted to look at what really would be the business challenges that you'd like to solve through a DBA. So uh, you could come from various fields. When we look at a DBA, yes, it's a business-driven uh, qualification, but it also helps you in different fields, such as what is it that you would like to achieve? What kind of impact and mark do you want to leave behind you? Uh, are you looking at change management? Are you looking at corporate social responsibility? Uh, if you're in the health sector, maybe it's leadership in the post-pandemic um, world, um, innovation, competition. Uh, those are the kinds of topics you look at. In terms of real life problems, you want to necessarily be part of an environment where you can um, go in and drive a conversation, drive a conversation around solving the problems that day-to-day -day activities uh, bring about in organizations, um, sustainability kind of decisions that need to be made. And these are the kind of problems and challenges that we face. But with this, the next aspect I want to look at is understanding, sorry, my slides are not moving. 
and then they move too fast, just a second. Why is it that we want to do a DBA? Let's look at the power and the relevance of it. Yes, there are problems you'd like to solve that you want to develop yourself as an individual, but why is it so powerful and relevant for you as an individual? So first and foremost, the starting point is kind of looking at what is the difference between a PhD and a DBA? And with that understanding, uh, a PhD is more theoretical specific, so it's not limited to, limited to, but more inclined towards individuals who uh, would like to go into the academic field. So if you want to become a lecturer or an, be in higher education, then this really is specifically more inclined towards why we do a PhD. When we look at the DBA, it's more towards business advancement and the benefits I've just mentioned a bit earlier on career growth, strategic thinking, uh, longevity and growth and so forth. So it's very important to look at focus areas where you can apply your research to solve business problems and solutions to problems that businesses currently have. So um, if you have a, a quick squiz at our online platforms and you look at the topics that our graduates have completed in their PhD, sorry, the DBAs, you will see that these are very current topics. These are topics that uh, are really people are looking towards how can we advise, how could we improve, uh, what is so interesting about it as well. So there are various advantages of the DBA, as I mentioned, and looking at you as an individual, you need to kind of weigh your options and understand which of it do I want to see the most come out of my study? And how would this benefit myself, my career, uh, the organization maybe that I'm at, and also the impact I want to leave in the world as well. So it's a leadership degree, and the words I love using is, it's solving tomorrow's problems with research from today. So ideally you, forecasting and you're planning ahead in terms of the research and the impact that you'd like to create. So ideally, you keep asking yourself, what impact would you like to create in your sector? Would it be for a policy uh, perspective? Would it be from a framework perspective? Um, would you like to give back to society and have some community engagement? What would you love to be known for? And what contribution ideally would you like to be making? So what is it that you need to know? Because sometimes you become a bit daunted with the website. Uh, sorry, if I quickly can ask, uh, Hanali, can I ask you to mute yourself, please? I can just hear your typing a bit. I'm so sorry. Um, with this, okay, so what you, need to know about, uh, what you do need to know about the DBA program is the specific processes involved. So there are two phases that you will find on our website, and I will just go into a bit more detail just now. But for your understanding, there are different pro phases in the uh, DBA. First, the initial proposal, then the final proposal stage as well, which we'll chat a bit about just now, and then the candidacy. Now, the question we also ask ourselves is, in the current situation of work-life balance, the commitments we have, is it doable? Is it something that I can fit into my schedule? So I'm here to say it's very, very doable or attainable if you can make four to 15 hours available per week. So you, so you can necessarily choose between evenings on weekdays or maybe weekends and depending on the pace and depending on how soon you want to finish the qualification, whether you want to take two years or four years, you can pace yourself around this uh, in terms of the amount of hours you need. Support is so essential because the DBA, DBA journey can be very lonely, it can be very daunting, but with Park specifically, we make sure that we allocate supervisors to you that are very much of experts in the field of your topic. So it's not a generalized perspective where every DBA student is just given a supervisor. We ensure that there is good alignment between the topic and the research you would like to specifically do as an individual and align a very credible and experienced supervisor in the field to you. There's a research community also available in terms of the support groups that will be provided uh, in terms of your colleagues, in terms of facilitation. And we provide tailored workshops to help you along the way. And uh, for, for example, um, how to do a literature review, how to write academically, how to reference, how to uh, look at what a methodology is. These are the type of workshops that we will give you to kind of enhance your understanding and guide you along the way. Uh, when you're conducting your research as well. So does this fit into your current responsibilities is the main question. Uh, and this is a question you need to ask yourself when you're evaluating, can I ask, um, 
you know, the best way to put it is the DBA is not specifically your journey only. It affects those around you. You need to check with your organization to see, you know, um, will you be able to ba balance your work and life? Would you be able to fit in that 10 to 15 hours um, per week? Um, in terms of your personal life, would you have a supportive spouse as well? And these are things that are really, really influential and depend on uh, how well you manage yourself through the whole journey. Uh, with that, I think the question we see quite often is, uh, what is the application criteria? What do I need to consider before applying? So as you will see on our website as well, first and foremost, we're looking for a pass rate or a 60 to 65 percent pass mark in your MBA. And I think the misconception is that we are looking at the average of the MBA, which is incorrect. Uh, we are looking at the mark you attained for your dissertation or the research component of your MBA. And that is should be between 60 to 65 percent, with the ideal being 65. With that, there is also recognition of prior learning. So the website does share a bit of information as to uh, the portfolio that is required, the understanding that the link between uh, your portfolio and qualifications and experience need to align very well to the NQF level of an MBA, for example. And this portfolio is then sent to uh, advisory boards and a DRC committee who then decides uh, whether or not you can be admitted into the program. So just for a bit of understanding and explanation. Okay. So just to I break this down a bit more further. I did mention that the DBA is broken up into different phases, first being the initial proposal and then the final uh, proposal. So as it stands, just to give you some guidelines of the date, um, you, the, the extension or the registration date was from the 31st of uh, October and your final date is now the 29th of November. Although the website does say the 30th, the 29th is actually a Friday and the 30th is Saturday. So this is when you can necessarily apply uh, for admission in terms of the DBA for this year. When you do apply in November, you then send through an initial proposal and you'll find that template on our website, which is approximately uh, 4,500 words as a maximum. So this is excluding your references. It should amount to between, I would say, about 9 to 20 pages where you're going to give us a gist of um, exactly what you would be doing in this proposal. So the guideline is quite specific, or the template rather, is quite specific in terms of guiding you as to uh, the title, the problem statement, the literature review, and so forth, and what you would be uh, including in this proposal. Come January of 2025, you will then get an outcome letter to see whether or not your study can then be moved on to the next phase, which is the final proposal stage. So you then register for the final proposal stage in January of 2025, and you are then given the entire year up until the 28th of November 2025 to work very hard and very wisely on this proposal. To help you, we allocate your supervisor almost immediately for the final proposal so that you can start working together to enrich and enhance this proposal. There will also be workshops that we will be providing for you on how to develop this proposal, um, the methods, the strategies, and so forth that can go with this. These are usually done over five days um, where we have three hour sessions every day for five days explaining to you on how best we can advise you and guide you along the process. Uh, there will also be a mock defense before the final defense because you will have to defend your proposal at the end. And in this mock defense, you will have experts explaining to you on, on feedback on how you should present, how to get your slides going, um, what content should be on and so forth. The actual defense will then take place and we will then uh, decide as a panel whether or not you then can proceed to the candidacy phase. And that's now post-2025. So once this is then completed, you will then go into the candidacy phase because we'd like you to succeed. And this phase is usually between two to four years. So what then happens in terms of support is we don't want to leave you on the lurch, if I may say. So we have colloquiums. So these are uh, four sessions a year. You are, it is compulsory that you at least do two uh, colloquiums a year. And in these colloquiums, you will come online and you would have a panel. So your supervisor and you would attend and uh, you would provide a presentation of the progress to date, what you're currently working on. You give us also your, a copy of your written uh, work to that specific point. And the panel goes into gives you uh, and gives you a good critique and rich information to help you and your supervisor further develop the study. Okay, so this is done in most of the time. Last but not least, at the end of the write-up, you will then submit for examination. 
and we will then send your exam your thesis for examination to at least one international and two national examiners where they will then mark it physically and give you feedback on the written component after the written component is then provided back to you given that you have minor corrections you will address these within a month and then submit back to the uh, the doctoral research office if i may call it and we will then look as if everything is aligned and if the all is clear and the corrections are done or, or wise enough or perfectly if i may say we then have the oral defense which is the viva you will then have to come in um, and present your thesis to your examiners so the panel is there and your examiners and you will present them with your study and what you've done and how you've completed your study in terms of defending it as an entire thesis followed by which you will then happily graduate so it seems like a mouthful but a step by step process of exact protocol stages and steps that we help you along with so that you are not left alone through the journey with that being said um the question that everyone has been asking how much would this cost me so for 2025 Uh, the first phase of the initial proposal costs 450 rand um and thereafter you would have to pay for the registration of final proposal depending on your outcome of 17150 now these are not upfront payments these are payments per phase or per year rather so as you reach phase 2 um you pay annually for the years as you go along and as you succeed uh, with your studies okay and you know this daunting task should i shouldn't i and i thought that a picture speaks a thousand words and this is why i chose this specific picture because we are in africa we want to look at the african content but we also want to solve global problems um it seems as though a dba could be so difficult that it's a mountain that needs to be climbed and will i make it will i not and this is why i chose this picture to show you that i'm not here to lie to you and give you false in a hope it is a difficult journey and therefore the road ahead of you is very windy but there is a path and there is light at the end of the tunnel um you would have so much of support in terms of research and learning we the support you will get is from your ac uh, academic support of your supervisor the facilitators at uh, mill park from your colleagues um and also looking at the mental aspect remember we don't want to forget about uh, work life balance a mental health um and mill park does offer counseling to you as well if you need some assistance in terms of the stresses that you are facing and what necessarily needs to be done so not to take up too much time uh, a little picture at the bottom as well understand that if you have families if you have little kids as well um if you schedule well enough and if you communicate well enough we can help you in terms of organizing yourself and uh coming up with a structure actually that helps you very well to attain this qualification so that's all from me thank you so much sagran excellent thank you so much uh, kalida for going into um such great detail uh, but also managing to do the high level summary you know to everyone as well so just excellent um there are questions that are coming through on the chat uh, which is really good um so i would encourage our participants to you know um to continue um asking your questions in the chat as well but before we get to that um let me start uh, kalida with you um there's a beautiful phrase that you had in one of your sl uh, slides solving tomorrow's problems with um yeah with the research from today and i'm paraphrasing i don't know where i got the exact words but um there's something really powerful about that and this goes to the heart of yeah the proposal um what we consider to be an interesting problem what we would consider and or how we would consider an individual to add to the body of literature uh, to the body of knowledge uh, but also more importantly something being relevant to the company or the organization for which that particular individual works at so what would you consider to be yeah interesting problems kalida i mean you've dealt with you know tens and tens of uh, thesis topics um yeah what would you you know how would you kind of guide the audience tonight in terms of what are some of the yeah more interesting kind of topics that they can focus on sure so i think the first distinction is understanding what is the difference between the mba and the dba uh so first and foremost with the mba you are trying to contribute to knowledge in terms of an existing problem 
with a DBA, you are trying to solve a problem with significant impact that has never been done before. So your contribution to knowledge is something new, something very developmental. So ideally, as a panel, we look at a topic and we say, is it relevant to the real world of business? Does the topic address significant issues, for example, that businesses face today? Is it really very current, for example? Um, also, is it practical? Is it something that uh, we can look at at the end and say this is an outcome now of research that we can apply directly to solve problems, improve uh, business practices that is can be done in a very tangible way. Uh, we also want to look at if your study is necessarily contributing to leadership or industry in the knowledge, uh, industry knowledge. Um, and, you know, ideally not a pie in the sky. Is it feasible in terms of is it achievable in the time frame and resources that a DBA can allocate in terms of what needs to be done? And last but not least, I would say, originality and innovation. Um, is it addressing gaps that existing literature hasn't done before? Are there new perspectives or new business challenges that will come out or be solved from this research? Great stuff. Thank you, Kalida. Um, one of the things that you speak about or that you just spoke about in terms of you know the dba experience is we talk firstly about the journey of up to five years uh, minimum period being two in terms of completing this um, it's quite an undertaking the individuals that invariably apply to us are professional working adults mums dads uh, they've got children and your slide captured it really really well um, including of course our context as africans um, but I want to speak to this issue of, you know, the, the commitment breakdown of 10 to 15 hours wrapped up with the support that individuals need to have. What kind of conversations should you know, your DBA applicants be having with their places of work, with their spouses, uh, with their significant others in terms of just how they should show up? Because this 10 to 15, of, uh, 10 to 15 hours minimum, um, again, it's an average, it's a minimum. So for me, it might be, it might take me 30 hours because you know there's a lot of literature to read, et cetera. So what kind of advice would you give to individuals, Kalida, in terms of the kinds of support that they need from the different important stakeholders in their lives? 100%. Uh, you know, uh, whatever we do impacts on those around us and we have to necessarily uh, bring that into account as well. So first and foremost, a good conversation with your line manager and organization you are with to see whether there is room for you to be able to create that balance. Uh, an example is if you necessarily are lo logging off at six, can you log off at five sometimes? Is there room for some study leave, for example, if you need to attend a specific workshops, maybe? Do you need additional time for deadlines? Uh, these are good conversations to have with an organization as well. Uh, sometimes also a good conversation to have is the funding issue. Would it be something they would be considering to fund you for? Um, from a personal perspective in your marriage, in terms of spouse, for example, uh, the duties and uh, running of errands, taking care of kids, the um, amount of hours that you would now sacrifice, is it something that can be balanced and compromised very well? And with the understanding that ideally this is a period of two to five years that impacts on your entire life. It's not your entire life that's going to be affected by just these time constraints right now. So it's really a sacrifice that has to be made um, to understand that it is going to be challenging at times. There are going to be ups and downs, but good practice, good support from a family structure, a spouse structure, work, and Mill Park gives you a lot of guidance in that perspective, yeah. Okay, lovely, great. Um, and I guess, you know, in, in the context of just the journey itself, um, and you spoke about a lot, it's the journey of the individual or the applicant. Um, some have not studied for a number of years. Um, some, sure, moving on from the MBA into the DBA and thinking about the DBA. Um, so they've just gone through um, an academic rigorous process. They've written a dissertation, etc. cetera. Um, but there's this nonetheless movement from wherever individuals might be into the DBA um, space. It comes with its vocabulary as we can definitely appreciate. Um, it, sometimes it really intimidates us. Um, it's anxiety ridden, which is fine and, and normal. Anxiety is part and parcel of the process. What advice would you give individuals? Um, you know, they're thinking about transitioning into this particular space. Um, and this is a question that comes up all of the time, you know. Um, what reading um, should individuals do? 
what should they consult with um, generally, um, you know, in terms of just yeah, preparing for this next chapter in their lives, Kalida? Definitely. I think it's also in tr a transition in understanding that sometimes there's many years of a gap between when you've last studied to now. Uh, with the alumni of the MBA coming in and straight from an MBA to a DBA, they're at an added advantage because they've just been through the processes of research. But to those returning to the academic world and, uh, you know, back to into education, I think the first daunting part is how do we academically write? Academic writing can be quite challenging. And and uh, the, the way we write business reports, the way we present ourselves is actually very different from the industry to the academic perspective. And uh, my advice is to start reading many journal articles. So first and foremost, if you don't have access to journal articles, start with your business magazine, start with your economics articles that you can have a look at, and then drive a bit deeper through your search engines like a Google Scholar, for example, and have a look at uh, publications like journal articles and how they've been writing them. What's the language? What's the terminology that's being used? Um, how are words phrased? How are points brought about? Just to give you a mindset as to the pattern that it takes for academic writing. With that, I think referencing is so important and we tend to read articles and stop just before the references in bibliography. Uh, so I'd say start having a, just an understanding when you look at the references to see how you reference and why you reference. Um, and also look at current research. We want a topic that's going to be so current, so new, uh, solve tomorrow's problems with today's research. So we don't actually want to look at papers that are from the 1980s, for example, uh, just to be as current as possible and uh, use that as a guide, Sekou. Excellent, excellent. Um, so, you know, all of this over here, of course, is in preparation to um, hand in this 4,500 word, uh, you know, piece of work that individuals um, need to do. Um, and again, it's to bring across the realities of now the DBA world, um, this, um, you know, um, advanced research, um, you know, space itself. The question, I guess, that's on everybody's mind, Kalida, is what constitutes a successful, um, you know, initial proposal? Um, and when we talk about word limit in any um, kind of a point of reference, one always is looking for something that is rather succinct to the point, etc. So what kind of advice um, can you give to, you know, the individuals that have joined tonight and thinking about getting into this particular uh, phase? Most definitely. I think um, as an individual, whenever you start reading, sometimes you get thrown off course as you read. And that's one example I give you. And the second one is when we see that we're writing towards a DBA and it's something so big and so important that we want to put forward. Sometimes we just want to solve the ocean's problems in one study. And I just want to say that don't be so broad. Don't become someone who wants to solve so much that you lose track of what you actually want to achieve. You just have 4,500 words as a max. Be very specific, be very goal driven, be very focused is the word I'd like to use to say, what is exactly your attainable goal that you want to use and achieve at the end of the day? And I'm using the word attainable because I'm saying you want to contribute to existing knowledge, but you also want to ensure that it's something that is feasible. Can you necessarily attain this within the next three to five years? Do you think you would have resources for it? Um, you know, and that's the kind of guideline I would be focusing on to say, how, am I, how real am I being? How guided am I being? How specific am I being focused? And again, ensuring that it is within the scope I'd love to achieve here. Great stuff, great stuff. Um, one of the things you've already covered, Kalida, is the, you know, the importance of referencing. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I think we come from the space of, you know, writing in, well, in my view, in my opinion, et cetera. But again, we're reminding our candidates that they're entering a, a totally different space, et cetera. Some advice, Kalida, in terms of, yes, the literature that they review, the ability to include this as ways of backing up the merits and uh, the claims that they are making in the proposal um, itself. Um, some advice to the candidates? Yes. Uh, so when it comes to the DBA, I think the understanding is that we want to really see in the proposal, proposal stage that you are a critical thinker. 
So ideally, we want you, you to substantiate. If you are making a claim that your research is so relevant, it's so important, it's so, um, the world cannot do without it, if I may say it in that way, it needs to be substantiated with evidence. And that evidence comes in from your references. So you want to look at current references from the journal articles that you've read that substantiate that what you're doing is necessarily very viable and important, number one. Um, number two, that you can critically analyze. So that is why reading is so vitally important, Segrin, is because you see this through your journal papers where you can actually visibly see a literature review, for example, and you look at the references and you look at the voice of the author or the voice of the, uh, the writer in it. And ideally in this proposal, we are looking at your voice. It's your study mm. at the end of the day. You're the owner of this. You are going to be the specialist of this. So yes, the readings are important. Yes, they will substantiate, but how critically can can you bring your point across uh, in terms of the mannerism in which you write? That's uh, great stuff. Thank you so much, Khalida. Um, I'm now going to switch to Zalna. So Zalna, from, you know, um, what makes a really successful application, but before we get to what makes a really successful, well, a, a, a written piece rather, it needs to start off in a rather sequential manner, right? And that is, you know, just given your experience, Zalna, um, and you've had many years of experience with DBA students and um, they've engaged with you as well. What would you say are the three things that they need to ensure in order to have a successful application? Well, first thing uh, and the most important thing is that the students need to ensure that their personal particulars and information is always correct because we are always liaising with the students in terms of communicating about um, registration dates uh, for the colloquia, uh, workshops, um, support sessions, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. So that's one of the things that is very important. Uh, the other is when the students are registering uh, to make sure that all the, um, the forms that is requested for instance, your MBA uh, qualification, your degree, um, all the documents that you upload onto the um, website, because the application is done online, all those documents need to be certified. Um, so all your supporting documents need to be in order. Um, and I would say that's important because you don't want to, uh, you know, delay the process of applying. Um, and when you apply for the uh, initial proposal, it's you apply and then you submit. So not straight away, but you won't want to waste time. So it's very important that you have everything up to date. And uh, not only that, uh, if you looked at uh, Kalida's slides, uh, the last slide depicted support, support. Um, and uh, I just wanted, uh, in my mind's eye, I was thinking, Another four at the bottom, support, 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 support. So um, because I'm that person uh, that is between yourself and giving information, so it's very important that you lie with me um, and I'm that uh, port of call so um, that we basically correspond and uh, if there's anything that you need to know and ask and uh, I will obviously forward information beforehand. Um, and, and I'll be that person that reminds you to send certain deliverables and make sure that all the deliverables are met and advise you of all important uh, meetings. Um, yeah, that's all that I can think of. Kalida, is there anything you'd like to add to that? No, I'm quite happy with that. But, you know, ideally the organization as well is so important to, of the documents you are submitting just to ensure they are certified, they are up to date mm -hmm. as well, and that the requirements are there. Sometimes it's just a back and forth because of just one missing document on Ill not correctly labeling the uploads as well. So just to be a bit more careful and stringent when you're doing that, yeah. Great stuff. Thanks so much, uh, Zalna. Uh, thanks uh, for your comments as well, um, Kalida. Um, Zalna, you said it, and I don't know whether you want to add a bit, any, uh, any bit more, uh, a bit more rather. It's about support, support, support. Um, the support from Mill Park Business School. What does that look like? Um, again, you know, I mentioned at the outset that there's a team of individuals, um, and this is, you know, um, you're just one of uh, many 
uh, that's part and parcel of this process. So what does that support look like from us in terms of enabling, well, not only a trusted learning journey of our students, but a successful journey? Well, you know, that's one thing we as a business school is committed to, is to our students and to Millpark's values and support being one of the key functions. Uh, we are there to assist all the students uh, from when you register um, and, uh, you know, registrations and the sales team and starting from scratch, uh, we will be there to support you all the way. Um, you mustn't uh, feel, uh, please feel free to email us. We're always available. We're on hand. We have that open door policy. Um, we are here after all for the students. So, um, and, you know, don't ever stop asking. If there's something you need to know, please ask. Uh, we're there. We'll be support you. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, it is, it is a long journey. Uh, we are there for you uh, throughout your journey to support you. So uh, don't be shy. Just reach out. Um, and if you need anything, just ask. We'll help you. That's it. Okay, great stuff. Thank you so much, Zelna. I'm now going to, um, Khalida and Zelna, I'm going to now look at the questions that are in the chat. And I'm going to pose them to you. Um, if we can't necessarily provide clarity or if we need more information, then, um, you know, we'll um, just suggest as such and we will reach out to the individuals that have, um, you know, asked the question. Uh, the one is um, an individual submitted a proposal back in 2022, uh, but then was asked to complete uh, the bridging course with Stadio. Um, that's been done, um, but the person is not sure if resubmitting a proposal to us is still re relevant, considering that it's been two years um, since the initial proposal. So most definitely, uh, ideally, the bridging course was part of the advice that we had given them with the initial proposal. So please reach out. I am happy to have a consultation. And I would have a look at the initial proposal that was submitted, the development from the Stadio bridging course, and definitely advise towards the final uh, proposal submission. So please do reach out before uh, the end of October, at least, so that if we can get you registered, we can get you there before October, the end of November deadline, yeah. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. So clear message to please resubmit uh, the proposal and there was deliberateness in terms of the bridging proposal. Uh, thanks, Kalida. The next question is, yeah, this um, the attention, well, does one do the DBA versus a PhD? Uh, but uh, the added complexity here is the individual is already working in uh, the academic space. Um, so which is a better degree? I know of um, individuals that have completed DBAs and are in the academic space. Um, so, but I'll leave it up to you, Kalida. Okay, so ideally, there's no specifics to say that you cannot be in academia with a DBA or vice versa. It's just looking at the, the kind of background behind the qualifications. So yes, the PhD is more inclined towards theoretical applications of research and the DBA more inclined towards the practical problem-solving approaches of business worlds and industry. So there is no restriction. If you are in academia, you're more than welcome to also complete a DBA. However, it is more industry-specific. So I'm saying that if you are in industry, as well it's more beneficial uh, as opposed to a PhD in that perspective but no restriction if that answers the question in a nutshell if you'd like to do a DBA and maintain yourself in an academic space yeah excellent fine great stuff um, I'm going to just remind um, our participants we are running different polls um, so we ask that you please participate in those polls um, complete them so that we can um, you know, uh, respond to you quite appropriately with um, what those polls are revealing in terms of additional information, etc., including also the request for uh, leaders' presentation. So, uh, just as a reminder of that, uh, the other reminder is this is a recorded session, and you will get a copy of the session, um, you know, after this evening. Um, so, just a reminder of that as well. So, I'm making my way down the questions. Um, and the next one is, um, do we have relationships with other companies in various industries 
where students are allocated or allowed rather to consult for research, to do consulting for research. Um, to this particular participant, we've got this on the MBA program. We've got a consulting module on the MBA program and companies bring their problems um, to the uh, business school and then students literally work in groups and address the issues that the company has brought um, to us. But as I say, very specific to the MBA. Um, Kalida, in terms of your understanding, um, this is how the question has come across. Um, you know, whether we work with various industries and allow students to do consulting or research, or consulting for research, rather. So um, ideally, my perspective from the DBA would be that, would you like to use those organizations as your participants for the research? So yes, most definitely in that perspective. From an ethical clearance perspective and research perspective, you can engage with any organization in terms of them giving, granting you permission to run your study and gain your participants' responses from them. Um, in terms of specific consulting, no, not from an academic perspective just as yet, but something for consideration, yes. Okay, great, thank you. Um, here's a familiar name, Vernon. Um, it's good to have you as one of the uh, participants tonight. Um, so Vernon's question to us, Kalida, um, is um, his challenge is refining and focusing his research title. Um, um, it intends building on a large existing uh, body of knowledge, uh, but he's concerned that um, he may be repeating what has already been done. Yep, that's one of the common kinds of issues that comes up. How does one av avoid um, idea replication? I think this is a perfect question, Vernon, because uh, this leads to the point I made in my presentation where uh, are you solving the world's problems or the ocean's problems at once? And it's really so difficult to refine and strategize. What are you focusing on specifically? And uh, I think it's so important that your focus area is really very specific and that would reach your outcome. It will be doable or uh, feasible to do so. So Vernon, I think uh, I would be happy to have a chat with you if you'd like to set up a consultation. I would have a look at your title, uh, advise you accordingly or guide you best I can uh, just to um, become more stringent or succinct in the way you'd like to have that focus area, yeah. Great, thank you so much, uh, Kalida. We've got a question from uh, Amanda Mojapuelo. Um, yeah, an interesting one, but it's a bit difficult for us to uh, clarify, Amanda, simply because, again, of the um, uh, the number of years involved. But Amanda's question is, what's the pass rate for DBA? What was the pass rate for the DBA students in 2023 um, and previous years? Um, so, Amanda, for 2000, well, we graduated three um, individuals that completed their DBA in 2024. So these individuals had completed everything, and in terms of just the examination, you know, having gone through all of the formal steps in the um, the, the DBA journey, they were done by uh, 2023. Um, so um, th that's what I can offer in terms of 2023. Kalida, we're also looking forward to graduating X number of students in 2025, right? And we still have more time, so I'm expecting more than three. But so far, we have the completed uh, DBAs as well, awaiting graduation in May, yes. Fantastic. Uh, let me also say that, you know, with Kalida as the new head of research and the head of the DBA program at Mopac, um, there's a whole lot of things that she's going to be changing up. Um, and she brings this new energy in uh, to the program. Um, so one of our goals is to try and support you and get you through the process within the minimum two year period at most three years. So uh, we, we would expect in, you know, in the coming years, the next year or two, we will be graduating you know, many more students um, simply because as we said from the get go of Kalida's passion um, for research and her working quite extensively with uh, doctoral students. I'm gonna go on to the next question. Um, Ah, nope. That was the last question from Amanda. Sorry, sir. I just Go see one that we may have missed. It's uh, what are some of one what are some of the sort of common reasons why initial proposals are get declined? Oh, okay. So I think that's a super question, Emmanuel. Um, why do we decline proposals? It's because of sometimes very shockingly, 
sloppiness. I think people uh, are busy at work. It's a last minute kind of submission. Um, try and make sure your referencing is correct. You are clear in what you are saying. The point you want to make is very, very clear. The terminology, the English you are using is correct. Uh, avoid a casual uh, English, if I may say, or text uh, English that you are using. Uh, write very formally, if I may say. Um, yeah, and, and then looking at a topic that's speaking to a specific industry. Are you from the health sector and are you, are you adding contributions of business to that? Um, and the reason why I use that example is because a DBA is business specific. So yes, it's multidisciplinary where you can apply business and managerial aspects to different industries, but you cannot completely divert away to the and You look at yourself and say, how is this a business study? So that's one of the reasons as well. And then going into the depth of understanding. So read it more like I suggested with the journals. Understand what is the title? What is the research problem? What is the objective? What is the goal of your study? Um, and at DBA level, justify why is this so important? And this needs to come through very clearly and uh, support yourself with very relevant references. And um, that's a way of maybe uh, minimizing uh, the common reasons as to why initial proposals are declined. Great stuff. Thank you, K Kalida. Um, ah, what's your <laughs> question? What's your opinion on using AI for writing proposal from Sylvester? So, so Sylvester, this is the very first reason of why the initial proposal will be declined, if I have to give you that as an example. Uh, so I'm really not against AI. I'm not against um, using AI, but just understanding that it is a supportive mechanism. You are welcome to use it to guide you along to understand maybe definitions of aspects for clarity for editing purposes for example but when it comes to writing the proposal it has to be very individual specific and that is why the dba is a transformation of journey because it transforms you as an individual and it's very hard to get that out of ai directly so yes use it as a guideline use it as a support structure but please do not use a mistake or create that mistake by going in and uh, creating that entire proposal with AI. Unfortunately, uh, we won't see you on the program after that. Brilliant. Good question to wrap everything up. Um, so I would just like to um, like to just bring, well, firstly, thank all our participants for coming this evening um, and for engaging with us. Um, I hope, and I'm, I'm sure we've done this, is um, you know just unpack what the DBA proposal is about, the different aspects, um, what's required in terms of how you should um, show up as a candidate to um, to the process, what we expect from you, um, the different levels of support that um, you need to have, the different conversations that you need to have, um, the length of time it takes to be able to complete this, um, the work that you need to do in terms of the articles that you need to read, whether it's just business magazines, the journal articles, familiarizing yourself with your topic, coming across to us in terms of that initial proposal that you have a, a really you know, firm sense um, of you know, what it is that you are trying to kind of convince us that is really important to study. Um, and when it goes to a committee of examiners, um, it's really going to suggest to them that this is the individual, sure, that knows where they want to, um, where they want to go. It's it's a well thought through, well researched at that particular stage, right? It's only the initial proposal, um, but these are the things that you need to kind of bring across um, in terms of just your, um, your your proposal and the DBA. The application deadline, as Kalida mentioned, is at the end of November. We have extended this, so you've got more time. But to all of you that have been here. I'm sure that I'm speaking to individuals that have been thinking about it, have been in the process for a couple of years. You're just not but starting the pr process now. If you are starting the process now, and if you are a prolific writer and you absolutely you know, can nail down the literature, then maybe this will absolutely work for you and get your stuff in by the 29th uh, or by the end of, um, end of November. For most of us, it takes us much longer. So for those that have already thought about it and have been in this process itself, don't wait any longer. Yeah? Do submit your proposals to us. Let us have a look. Let us give you feedback, etc. To the question that has been asked you know, from Sylvester in terms of AI, I reiterate Kalida's um, comments. 
we live in a world where we are we have the technology we use it as thinking partners we use it as partners to kind of explore ideas etc but when it comes to putting words on a piece of paper a digital piece of paper and expressing it to us and bring it across to us these absolutely have to be your words yeah i know there's a challenge sometimes with our writing and we say i couldn't have said this any better than how ai is saying it do not fall into those traps because kalida made it quite clear if we do pick up that there is um you know a proposal that has been written by ai then it's not um going to you know um look favorably it will not be favorable um as it relates to yourself so again thank you so much for coming this evening um as we mentioned this is going this is a recorded session we will be um sending you a copy of the recording it includes kalida slides as well there polls that have been running um in the background thank you so much for participating in that thank you hanli for all that you have done as well in terms of putting this thing up uh playing your role um she's the magician behind all of this year so uh we are really grateful for everything that you have done to kalida and to zelna thanks so much for yeah just making individuals um yeah absolutely you know get their hands around what's required it can be a wee bit daunting but you know your comments have absolutely unpacked the whole thing so thanks everyone and um have a safe um yeah um safe travels back home if you haven't as yet left the office